Hi everyone. So because the last video about the EPA gutting the Clean Water Act was such a downer, now I want to share some really uplifting stories. So these are three solutions to the world water crisis that actually work both in America and abroad. So watch to find out if your community could consider implementing one of these. I'm Isabel Friend, I'm a water advocate and educator, and I've seen some really beautiful ways in which people are combating and circumventing the forces of water privatization and desertification around the world. And these examples really set a precedent. They are really strong steps along the path to water justice and water equality. So for one thing, to prevent lowering water tables and draining aquifers, we can limit population growth in a region depending on the available water supply. So like Bolinas, California did, for example, which totally stopped any new housing development as the water table reached its limit. So they've set the precedent legally, and so you can do it in your own town too. We have to learn to live within the limits of our watershed. So take this idea to your town hall or your city council and see if your community would be open to following Bolinas' example. Second, a great alternative to corporate control of water is PUPs or public-public water partnerships, PUPs. This is where established public systems share expertise and skills to those in need, like public sector unions, for example, using their resources to support public water services in developing countries to provide local workers with skills. So it's been working really well between Stockholm Helsinki water authorities and Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania, and between Amsterdam water and cities here in Indonesia and in Europe. If each public water utility in the Western world adopted three cities in need, pups could operate globally and provide water to everyone in need at a fraction of the cost of what's now being spent by supporting these private companies. So this is a concrete example of one of the ways that cooperation over water resources could be a globally uniting force for humanity, joining people of diverse cultures to share and prosper together. Third, another really great role model is Uruguay. So their water had been privatized by a subsidiary of Suez, which is one of the most evil water cartel companies in the entire world. And as usually happens when they take over, water prices skyrocketed, the water that they provided was polluted, and services were cut off to schools and underprivileged areas. So the Uruguayan people rallied for a reform of their constitution, and they passed a constitutional amendment that actually established the right to water and forbade privatization. So that's the model that water activists have as a precedent when advocating for global change, democratic constitutional reform. Because democracy is not just an electoral ritual, it is the power of the people to shape their destiny and to determine how their own thirst is quenched which is why the fourth solution that I'm sharing with you is one that has yet to be adopted, but will be revolutionary when it is, and you can help in that process. It's the proposal for a world water law. The world water law requires the uncompromising protection and restoration of all natural water sources, watersheds, aquifers, rivers, lakes, wetlands, estuaries, and oceans. It requires the rewilding of ecosystems necessary for the restoration of the planetary water cycle. It requires the guaranteed free access of all humans and animals to natural uncontaminated water. So the world water law holds all governments, corporations, communities, and individuals fully accountable for their own impact on waters everywhere. And this one law serves as a unifying foundation for all governments and all citizens to work together with community-led wisdom and stewardship councils in ways that can effectively serve the health and the vitality of the whole. So you can learn more about it and you can show your support over at codes.earth slash water law. So here's the key thing to understand. The root of the hydrological crisis and therefore the root of the climate crisis is the privatization of water. Treating the source of life as a source of profit has led to the drying and warming of the environment as well as innumerable health and human rights crises as those without the ability to pay for water are forced into dire circumstances. Now, according to the World Health Organization, 80% of disease worldwide is caused by unclean drinking water. 
let that sink in. 80% of disease is caused by unclean water. And currently, one out of every three people on the planet doesn't have access to potable water. One out of three. By the year 2050, in only 30 years, it's estimated to be one out of two people without drinking water. That's half the world. So here's the question for you. Can life be owned? Well, I don't think so. No, of course not, right? Life itself is the vivacity under the will of nature alone. But if the source of life and the sustenance of life is owned, then the lives of every living being who requires it are controlled as well. In fact, the Chinese symbol for water is also the symbol for control. So those of us who are privileged enough to have had access to clean water for our entire lives, we have a responsibility to the full third of the planet for whom capitalistic interests, which treat water as a commodity rather than a commons, have robbed. These numbers should be staggering to you. They should be motivating. They should stir the very waters of your bloodstream. Water is the thread that connects us all. And every violation of the water cycle is an act of war and violence against the earth and against life itself. And because cooperation and self-governance are the keys to managing water, water can inherently create conditions of peace around the world. But when water disappears, competition, conflict, and war inevitably result. Water can create peace and cooperation, or it can create war and conflict. And all the corporations securing fresh water sources care about is the bottom line. Whoever owns the finite fresh water on this planet controls access to it. So the dirtier the world waterways become, the more valuable their private clean water assets are. These companies don't want to see a world of clean water. The more scarce it is, the more they sell. Private corporations simply cannot operate on the principles of water conservation, water justice, and water democracy because they're dependent on increased demand to generate profits. So water has to become understood to be part of the global commons, but clearly subject to local democratic and public management. And it's up to we the people to restore the blood of the earth back into every single watershed, back into the trust and stewardship of those local communities. And I really hope this video and these three ideas, four ideas, <laughs> spark and inspire you to make some difference in your community, and your watershed. I hope it's inspired you. And if you want to learn how to make a bigger impact, activate your water guardianship and empower your aqua activism, then you can check out my video and blog post entitled Water Needs You that has fun ways to get started with water activism and stewardship. And if you want to learn more about why water is life and why it's so magical and so amazing, then check out the free webinar on my website, waterslife.love. It's 70 minutes. It's an overview of everything fascinating. I hope you've gotten some value out of this. If you've learned something new, please like, share, comment, subscribe. If you want to stay in the loop about water, again, visit my site, subscribe to the newsletter, follow me on Instagram at Jen Isabel Friend, etc, etc. As always, I want to keep bringing you valuable content. So please let me know what you would like to learn about water, and maybe I'll make a video just for you. So I hope you have a blessed day and stay hydrated.